Hello friends, welcome back to Multi Question World. We all know that Kerala PSC has announced the notification of DME Lab Technician Grade 2 examination. So, as per your request, from today onwards, we are going to start the syllabus wise preparation for the exam. Today, we are going to discuss introduction to hematology, blood collection, and anticoagulants. Hematology is the study of blood. Hem means blood and logos means study. So, hematology is the study of blood. Blood is a complex fluid which circulates throughout the body in closed channels called blood vessels. Plasma is the fluid part and solid part is comprising of cellular elements. The cellular elements consists of cells which is RBC or erythrocytes, WBC or leukocytes, platelet or thrombocytes. The routine hematological investigations include total cell count, differential count, hemoglobin estimation, ESR, PCV and coagulation studies etc. Next we have to learn about blood collection methods. Blood for various diagnostic investigations can be obtained by capillary blood collection or venous blood collection. The method selected depends upon the amount of blood required for the investigation. So, so first of all, we will see what is capillary blood collection method. This method is adopted when the amount of blood required is very small. Peripheral blood sample is obtained by skin puncture using an instrument called blood lancet. It has a flat body with a pointed tip. It allows penetration of skin into a maximum depth of 3 mm and only a small amount of blood can be collected using this method. Then let me know which are the common sites of capillary blood collection. The common site which is selected for capillary blood collection in adult is fingertip that is index or ring finger and ear lobe. And in infants the puncture is made on heel or on big toe. So again note the sites. For adults, it's fingertip and earlobe. For infants, it's heel or big toe. All of you know the procedure. So, we are not discussing the method and it is not important for the PSE exam. Next, we have to learn about venous blood collection method. Venous blood collection method is adopted when there is a large amount of blood is needed. Here, the sample is collected using a sterile syringe and a disposable needle. The size of the syringe is selected according to the amount of blood required for the investigation. And its parts include nozzle, barrel and piston. The barrel is the outer part which contains graduation as per its capacity. The blood is taken into the syringe by the movement of piston piston or otherwise called plunger and nozzle is the part to which the needle is attached. Needle also consists of three parts hub, shaft and bevel. Hub of the needle is fixed to the nozzle of the syringe. Nowadays disposable needles are common. Hub of the disposable needles are made of plastics and they are universally color coded depending upon their gauge size. The gauge size of the needle are 21 gauge and 22 gauge in adults. The gauge size for adults are 21 gauge and 22 gauge. And for infants the gauge size is 23. The gauge size denotes the diameter of the lumen of the needle. Higher the gauge size, lesser will be the diameter. High gauge size needles, that is in, for infants we are using 23 gauge needle. It will have a small diameter. In adults we are using 21 gauge and 22 gauge but comparatively the bow size will be higher than that of needle used for infants. Example, 16 gauge needle are used in blood bank. The needle used in blood bank will have a bo higher bore size but the gauge is 16. So, so diameter decreases when gauge size increases. Then, which are the veins selected for venous blood collection? 
there are three veins present on anticubital fossa the first one is anterior cubital vein second one median cephalic vein and the third one is basilic vein these veins are selected for adults and in infants femoral veins are also used order of blood draw and color code of vacutaneous are also important these topics are already discussed in the channel in interview of laboratory technician next let us discuss about anticoagulants anticoagulants are the chemical substances which can prevent the coagulation of blood in vivo or in vitro in vivo means inside the body and in vitro means outside the body anticoagulants are classified in different ways according to its origin the form in which they are available routine or special purpose anticoagulants according to its origin anticoagulants are classified into natural and artificial anticoagulants anticoagulants of natural origin are called natural anticoagulants and examples are heparin and herudin heparin and herudin are natural anticoagulants next is artificial anticoagulants edta oxalates and citrates are coming under artificial anticoagulants and they are chemical substances so they are called as artificial anticoagulants next classification is based on the form in which they are available according to this anticoagulants are classified into dry and wet form wet means liquid and dry means powder form edta oxalates and fluorides are coming under dry anticoagulants they are available as powder form and acd sodium citrate are coming under wet anticoagulants they are available as liquid form next is routine and special anticoagulants first of all routine anticoagulants that is edta oxalates and citrates it is routinely used anticoagulants then special anticoagulant that is acd and sodium fluoride acd is used in blood bank and sodium fluoride is used for blood sugar estimation these are special purpose anticoagulants next is about edta edta is ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid it is known as anticoagulant of choice in hematology it is an important point about edta anticoagulant and it is commercially known as versine or sequestrin the mode of action is calcium chelation edta binding calcium as an insoluble salt which precipitates or convert it into a soluble non ionizing form that is chelation the advantages of edta anticoagulant are it best preserves cell morphology and prevents clumping of platelets concentration commonly used is 1 to 2 mg per ml of blood next is about oxalates the mode of action is same as that of edta that is calcium chelation oxalates are of three type potassium oxalate ammonium oxalate and double oxalate first of all potassium oxalate 2 mg per ml of concentration is needed it is used for chemical analysis it causes shrinkage of rbc's so as it causes shrinkage of rbc's it cannot be used for pcv esr and cell morphology due to shrinkage of rbc pcv esr and cell morphology will not be processed by potassium oxalate anticoagulant next is ammonium oxalate it is same as that of potassium oxalate in concentration that is 2 mg per ml it causes swelling of rbc potassium oxalate causes shrinkage of rbc while ammonium oxalate causes swelling of rbc as the swelling effect it cannot be used for pcv esr and cell morphology the shrinking effect of potassium oxalate and swelling effect of ammonium oxalate is balanced balanced by a modification of oxalate that is double oxalate or winrops mixture it is also known as balanced oxalate as it is balancing the swelling and shrinking effects of ammonium and potassium oxalates respectively here it is prepared by ammonium oxalate and potassium oxalate in the ratio 3 is to 2 it can be used for hemoglobin estimation pcv esr and morphological studies and the concentration is 2 mg per ml next is about citrate mode of action is calcium chelation 
it will bind calcium as an insoluble salt which precipitates or converting into soluble non ionized form citrate is a wet anticoagulant and it is not used for cell counts and hemoglobin estimation as it causes dilution as it is a wet anticoagulant it causes dilute dilution so that cannot be used for cell counts and hemoglobin estimation the common citrate anticoagulants are trisodium citrate and acd solution trisodium citrate is used for esr estimation by westergren's method the concentration used is 3.8 percentage the anticoagulant to blood ratio is 1 is to 4 for coagulation studies the anticoagulant to blood ratio is 1 is to 9 3.2 percentage is the concentration 3.8 percentage is for esr and 3.2 percentage is for coagulation studies next is acd solution acd solution is used in blood bank acd solution is acid citrate dextrose as a is citric acid c stands for trisodium citrate and d for dextrose hence the name acid citrate dextrose solution that is acd solution next is about natural anticoagulant that is heparin it is antithrombin in action antithrombin means against thrombin that is prothrombin will not convert into thrombin it is prevented by antithrombin conversion of thrombin from prothrombin is inhibited by antithrombin that is the action of heparin so blood remains in fluid state do not clot and it is used for osmotic fragility test and arterial blood gas analysis the concentration used is very low that is 0.1 to 0.2 milligram per ml next is sodium fluoride it is also known as fluoride oxalate it is used for blood sugar estimation it's an enzyme poison so it prevent glycolysis Glycolysis will reduce the amount of sugar in the sample. As it is an enzyme poison, it will prevent glycolysis. So, the blood sugar content will not be decreased in the sample. The concentration used is 2 mg per ml. Potassium oxalate is to sodium fluoride ratio is 3 is to 1. So today we are winding up. You can watch the previous videos from playlist. We have discussed a lot of questions in previous videos. You can watch it from playlist. And if you are watching without subscribing, please do subscribe the channel. Press bell button to get the notifications on time.